Okay, great. So everyone should be able to see this uh, presentation. If you can't, please, please, uh, please put a message in the chat. By the way, I've kept the chat enabled. Generally, I will disable the chat in the presentation, but just for today, I just decided to keep it open and we'll see how it goes. So um, how to create an SEO layer content strategy that gets traffic. So obviously, um, the idea of this presentation is really to get out there what, what I mean by SEO led. This is kind of something I've been working through uh, the last couple of months and it's accumulation of, you know, a couple of years of really understanding and putting in SEO, SEO systems and processes and, and really building the, uh, building the strategy. So um, the, the goal of this uh, presentation is to go through what this means, how to apply it to your content strategy. And with that being said, I just wanted to say obviously a big thank you to everyone that has been part of this journey so far. So I've obviously, it's been a very long journey. And again, since I've, uh, since I've started and there's been lots of people who've been part of it. So it's always good for me to um, pause for a few seconds and, and, and say thank you. So what we're gonna do in this event is we're gonna be the, the first uh, part of the event. I'm gonna be actually talking about what does it mean, SEO led. And obviously it's a, I shouldn't say it's a new terminology or acronym, but it's actually, something that we a lot of people are doing probably subconsciously and um i really wanted to like define seo led content strategies and what does it mean for businesses if you're in the b2c or the b2b space and with that we'll then talk about how to approach an seo led content creator content creation um so that is actually where i will be interviewing uh mark Mesa. he is an emmy awarded film director and content creator and he has tons of experience in practically uh, building out content strategies, defining what's good, what's bad, how to scale uh, content creation and actually uh, build, um, build really good narratives. So I'll actually be interviewing him on that second and third point. We'll also be talking about how to choose topics and kind of narrow down your topic selection. And last of all, um, we'll look at how to brief content writers. And with that, I will be giving away tomorrow in an email after the after the webinar a free template, a free brief template that will help you uh, structure your content that is SEO friendly and kind of accounts for all of the uh, aspects to building uh, an SEO led content strategy. So I'm just going to check that everyone can see the content. Have, does, can everyone see the presentation? Can we just check in before we? Yeah. Thank you, Pastor PD. Okay, great. Let's keep going then. I just wanted to check because I actually shared my screen instead of the, the slide. So um, I haven't done that before. It was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a test. Okay, so um, how to use the chat function is just a few um, uh, household tips before getting started. So I'm going to leave the chat on. It's on your right. So if you're just joining now from wherever, um, the chat function is on your bottom right. You can, you can, uh, any questions in there or chat with the uh with the attendees and i've left it on jim do i actually turn it off the last webinar i turned it off this webinar i'm going to keep it on and then at the end of the webinar we're going to do like a live q a um and then the the content and framework for the event for today i just went through that if some people are just joining this is the content um i'm hoping that this doesn't go over 60 minutes i'm going to try and keep it as uh punchy and precise and on and on time as possible and at the end of the event, we have this open QA and I'm going to be joined by Mark. And uh, this is going to be a really, uh, really exciting. So let's get into it. So <laughs> this is funny because this is actually a bit of a joke, but um, a short pun <laughs> story of how I found SEO. As you can see, it's not very short. So I'm just going to explain a little bit about my backstory and kind of give you guys some uh, insight. So, in 2002, uh, my dad moved from the UK, from London, from the south of London, a little town called Bromley, which is the outskirts of London, to Argentina. And I was a eight year old and I grew up obviously in England and then I moved to Argentina. So um, I grew up in a really like, I'd say restricted or religious household where access to the internet or computers was extremely scarce and it was basically prohibited. And as I went through my primary and then secondary and tertiary studies, I obviously gradually, because it was just um, the, all the other ki kids were doing it or people around me were doing it, were using computers. I got, you know, got access to the internet for the first time in around 2009. 
And I remember just the, the feeling of like touching a computer and like surfing the internet, as they used to say. And it, I, I can't really say that's where my CEO kind of passion started, but it was just that feeling of liberty and being, you know, have, have to be able to like do so much and have so much reach and impact just from a computer or desktop and from anywhere. And really fast forwarding that to today, I mean, as I said, it's a long story, I'm trying to keep it short. Um, I, you know, I've really been passionate about um, being obviously uh, an SEO consultant, an SEO coach and helping, I've done lots of implementation projects, but being able to help people have those breakthrough moments really remind me of that breakthrough moment I had when I was, you know, uh, 10 or 11 or 12 when I first used the internet for the first time. And then as I, you know, came across more and more information, I built my, uh, my SEO knowledge from very basic, very, very, very uh, humble beginnings. And uh, when I built my first website when I was 18 and, uh, and then I've, since then I've you know built uh, multiple websites myself uh, for for other people, and um, I've been hired to do both implementation, auditing, and uh, coaching projects related to SEO. And obviously, SEO is a very very broad topic, and it can mean a lot of different things, and it's very very dynamic. And I always make that very clear. So when we're talking about SEO, I like to be very clear. We can be talking in a B two B fashion, or a D two C type business, or a B two B or B two C. And it's very important that the things that I'm going to say, the recommendations I'm going to make, they're going to be very much uh, generic and they would have, you would have to then apply them to your business model and obviously get professional advice. Um, and most importantly, when you are you know, adopting SEO for your business, uh, try and look at it as holistically and practically as possible. So just start with something small and then grow. That's all I can really say from my SEO journey and how I really got here and, and, and why I'm doing this today is because um, you have breakthrough moments that kind of open up the next chapter and it's a bit like a game. You just start, you know, um, you start moving through different le levels of the game. And as you grow in SEO, what I've found is that you, you start understanding comprehensively and putting things together. So today, uh, 2023, I am actively uh, working as an SEO consultant and coach uh, for a very small handful of businesses. Um, I don't get involved in hundreds of projects and I'm open to admit it to saying that. Um, I like to you know, choose projects that make sense um, and can actually see the results on long term and a medium term and be able to transfer that knowledge and get buy-in and really build something that is sustainable and, and scalable. So with that being said, I have a short video um, that I'm going to share. And it is, again, it's a just a two minute video and it explains um, very briefly what I do. And I'm gonna share that with a new mechanism here on the, on the webinar feature. So if you guys can hopefully see this and hear the audio, it'd actually be, it'd be wonderful. So here goes. Hi, my name is Jason Pittock and I'm an SEO coach. I help business professionals and marketing leaders understand, execute and scale SEO within their businesses or organizations. You know, he really takes his time to think through very strategically um, the psychology of the prospects and, and the market and how they think, how they make decisions. And based on that, you know, he crafts the marketing strategy, the ad strategy and um, you know, the proof is in the numbers. He was able to get us results right away. He has been slow to make promises, but his follow through is through the roof. And um, I appreciate how he is concerned with sustainable marketing. Always gets great results, really skilled at what he does, variety of different marketing techniques and tactics, uh, and takes the time to kind of review everything with you and make sure that you're happy. You know, our sales have, have increased uh, dramatically, our, our lead generation from the web went from uh, zero to hero in about six months with uh, with Jason Song. If you're looking for someone who will help you build sustainable marketing systems that can scale, Jason's your guy. Again, I would definitely recommend Jason and the team. Uh, thank you guys, and uh, we you know we look forward to continuing our relationship in the future. Talk soon. Highly recommended, and. Um, wouldn't hesitate to say uh, Jason is a great guy to help you get that SEO journey started. Thanks Jason and uh, anyone considering working with him, uh, you're in good hands. If you're interested in SEO, please reach out or send me a message. Me or my team will get in touch with you as soon as possible. Great. Okay.
okay, guys. So um, just back to the uh, back to the presentation. I'm going to um, I'm going to share again the screen, and we're going to get stuck into the presentation for today and all of the. Okay, great. We're back. Okay, so that we have. I will. There you go. So if you guys want to connect with me, or um, currently are considering any SEO projects or want to have uh, just an open discovery conversation about your SEO situation, what you're going through, things you're dealing with, things you're working with, uh, please go ahead and scan that code. That will um, add you to, you've got obviously a, like different options. When you scan the code, you can add me on Instagram or LinkedIn. You can visit my website and you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is actually kind of what I'm focused on in this period, of, at this time, the last couple of months and throughout this year, I've really much committed to uh, building my YouTube channel. So that is the code and let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing about today, so SEO led content strategy. So what does this really mean? Well, the reality is when you look at an SEO project, you have lots of touch points and there are so many factors that you have to take into account and you have to work with. So one of the things that I have looked at and classified over time is really how to unite the culture, uh, the systems and the goals to fulfill the outcome of organic visibility, which is your content being visible uh, for, for, for everyone and specifically for your prospect audience. So when I mean uniting the culture and systems, it's really uniting the everything that goes on around this SEO led content strategy. And the goals are really the data, what you want, where you want to go, what you want to achieve and how you're going to achieve it. So the outcome of using an, I would say, employing an SEO led content strategy is number one is vis visibility for increased traffic. So this is like the logical outcome. We can become more visible. We receive more traffic, right? We have more content out there that is optimized for visibility. It brings us more traffic. Now, it also contributes to improving conversion rates because if you have uh, a lead or a prospect customer who is um, considering your business and comes across your content from a non-branded keyword, that is going to drive up your authority and is most likely gonna help you improve, improve that uh, likelihood of conversion. You've got retained users, drive loyalty, increase your authority, increase your brand awareness, and of course, generate leads or whatever is you're, con you're considering is important for your next step of your business. Now, when it comes to the uniting of these different aspects, I've created this like graph to try and like imagine SEO is like a universe. There's so many different things going on. You've got your content creation, you've got your content writers, you've got your website, you've probably got your website developer, you've got your domain authority, you've got PR, you've got all of these things going on. And when you really want to build an SEO led content strategy, which is kind of the underlying and it's the, I'd say like the, the, the primary, primary thing you want to be focused on when you're getting into the, into this stage of your business, you can really unite it by looking at your internal expertise, which is the knowledge that you have that you want to get out there. The data, which is really how you're going to build those conclusions, how you're going to build conclusions about what you're going to publish, what you want to publish, uh, what keywords make sense from a business perspective. So that's the data. And then the third one is leadership and culture. So leadership and culture is right. How do you get buy-in? How do you get buy-in from all of your team? How do you build the processes so that people understand why SEO is important for your business? And how do you get that into your culture? So SEO becomes a conversation and it's not like a disjointed operation that has, you know, multiple levels of separation between the business or the marketing. And it's just like a, a thing. It, it really isn't because your visibility is your, is dependent to your business success. Your business success is dependent to your visibility. So um, having buy-in in the culture with your, with your leadership, with your team makes sense. And connecting that with the expertise is really what you want to get out there and the data. This is how you can unite and you can start to understand uh, what an SEO-led content strategy. So obviously you've got your internal expertise. The goal of your internal expertise is that you can resonate with your buyer profile. So with the person who wants to buy your product or services, you want to leverage your internal like subject matter experts, often referred to as SMEs, the acronym subject matter experts. Now, that being said, if you're in a service business or a product business or, a, you know, a, like a subscription business, being able to connect with your buyer profile 
is key because they will then understand that you care about their needs. You care about what they're going through, their pain points. The leadership is getting your buy-in. So as I said before, like getting your buy-in from your, your leadership team or people that you report to, understanding uh, that the, you know, to get the enablement from the leadership, make sure they understand there's clear expectations and show the roadmap to the team. So you have buy-in from all those stakeholders. Culture, so develop the mindset that SEO first. So for example, if you're gonna do a website rebuild or you're considering updating sections, you know, people are ready have this SEO prior, or this SEO sensitivity that makes sense for them to be aware and understand that we care about it. And last is data. So use data to build conclusions. So when you're you know using using um, different tools or software to find out you know search volume or in, intent or user intent or metrics related to your SEO, you really want to use that to build those conclusions. Now. Step one of any SEO game is to be visible, right? This is the goal. And when it, when, it, when I mean be visible, what we're looking at is getting eyeballs on your content, right? You want to get the right set of eyeballs on your content. And this can be, you can look at lots of different metrics, but I try to like the goal of SEO and getting you know your content out there and people seeing it is really comes down to four categories of, you might say, takeaways from employing an SEO-led strategy. So number one is your impressions. So obviously this is people that are finding your content. Obviously the second is clicks. That is actually people that's found your content and your content makes sense and matches their search. So they actually click through. The third is on-page engagement. This can be your conversions, your different types of conversions or what you want them to do on your page or on your digital. Uh, on your digital asset, be it a landing page, be it a blog, be it a service page, wh whatever it is, you're going to have on-page engagement. And then lastly is your positioning yourself for more revenue opportunity. Now, that being said, um, every business has a different uh, a different uh, game when it comes to what it, where SEO plays or hits hardest. Now, what that means is some people are, you might say, I have a small website and um, they're optimizing it to get more visibility and it might not always be the same game for for example a big uh, education or a university or um, an, on an online education business that you know might, might have a lot of leads coming at the top but might need more content in the middle of the funnel to build improve conversion rates drive authority so when it comes to like looking at revenue opportunity connecting seo with revenue opportunity isn't a straight line. Um, there's going to be lots of fragmentations of what that, where that can go. But the goal is that you move the revenue opportunity closer to the business by becoming more visible. Now, I've got a little, one of my favorite memes is this, your content needs eyeballs. So your content needs to be seen and it also needs to be built by people who understand who we're talking to. And that's why it's so important. And the whole concept of an SEO led content strategy is that you can build a content strategy that your, your prospect leads, your prospect customers, the audience you're talking to, it makes, it makes complete sense to. And this is a statement that I often use um, by Don Draper. <laughs> there comes a point when, when seduction is over and force is required. So the long story is, um, it, you know, content can be a lot of things and um, sometimes content needs to happen because you need to get your you need to get your uh, website's assets out there. You need to get visibility for keywords, but content shouldn't be forced. It shouldn't it should be led. It should be encouraged by conversations with your sales team, understanding the product and your offering, understanding what keywords or search terms you want to you want to optimize for. Um, so content shouldn't be created just to tick boxes. And lastly, content is a conversation. It's a conversation between you and the audience. And in that audience is your prospect customers. And I've created this uh, little uh, graph here that explains, sorry, I didn't, I didn't jump slide there, guys. So um, they're the three points. Content creation shouldn't be forced, it should be led. Content shouldn't be created to fulfill malinformed KPIs and just tick boxes. And create content creation is a conversation. So being able to have systems in place to capture the feedback and the conversation your sales team are having with your, your customers and your audience is really how you're going to build an ideal content strategy that is going to bring traffic and bring visibility to your, uh, your business and assets. So 
Organic visibility. So I've been talking, I've mentioned visibility a few times so far, and you're probably thinking, what is organic visibility? Now, I talk a lot about organic visibility because I think it kind of wraps what um, when we're when we when we're talking about uh, SEO. I think it really it defines uh, it defines us. It really defines the goal. It defines you might say the people that are behind this project. Um, you might say if you're going to your board and you're talking about SEO, probably the best conversation you can talk about is coming visible organically and this is a bit like real estate it's a bit like buying a piece of land and putting up a building um, it is piece on piece it's brick on brick and this is how you really build visibility now organic visibility really starts with content creation so if you create content and for your website you're going to have started this journey of visibility so content really provides resources for the search engine so search engines google safari edge firefox bing all of these, safari, these different engine, uh, search engines, really they are satisfying the user experience of their browsers. So that's people that are making searches. So our goal is to be positioned on those search engines. But if you, if you consider that the search engines are interested in the user experience, it really makes sense that our content strategy is SEO led. Because if the content that we're positioning isn't great, we are not contributing to a positive user experience. It establishes the opportunity for the website to showcase their expertise and authority. So you know your business better than anybody else. You know, hopefully you know your buyer profile better than anybody else, or at least you're trying to figure it out. You have some idea. So it gives you the opportunity to show that to your potential customer. When you're creating content, if you can use the right words, you can have the right content creation process in place, you should be able to really communicate that narrative. And lastly, it allows you to really influence attract, convert, and retain customers through bringing people to your website via your content. So step two is how to approach content creation. So this is really exciting because this is really where we get to the, uh, the most important part of today is how do you then go about creating content that, um, that, that, that is SEO led. So here we have another Dom Draper meme. <laughs> Quality content with no visibility has no value. So I often uh, quote this and um, people probably get sick and tired of <laughs> me saying this, but uh, the, the, the reality is quality content that doesn't have any eyeballs as in nobody actually finds it really doesn't provide any value because the goal is that people find it. And it, I mean, if you can build a timeline and, and say, okay, I'm gonna create a piece of content today on, on, in February, and by the 15th of May or by the 15th of December, I want it to be visible. That's okay. But if you're going to create content and not concerned that no one's ever seeing it, there is a problem. So content needs to be visible. And that is the whole point of today's webinar is that we can show you how and give you some of the pointers as to how to build a content strategy that will become visible. This is a really interesting metric. So 18 touch points. So this is built by um, by a, a like a colleague vendor uh, called, called Pardo. I actually found this resource and um, I've worked with them before for different marketing campaigns. But they have a resource or a data uh, a database showing that when it comes to organic and SEO leads and customers, there are eighteen touch points. That means eighteen times your prospect customer has engaged with your content before the, they actually become a qualified lead or a conversion. So that is so important as people come in at the top of your funnel with search terms and visibility. This is how you will can move them down the funnel by having that right structure to your content. Now, often people, you know, are thinking, well, you know, content is key. The, you know, the only thing I care about is creating content. I'm just going to go and, you know, uh, subscribe to a writing assistant or chat GPT and just push out content and that's the right thing to do. Well, unfortunately guys, it's not. And anytime something has appeared to be easy and to be simple and to be, have absolutely no flaw and just be like the obvious solution, it's backfired. And there's multiple, uh, multiple ways to, 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 to show that. The first thing is that the king in your business is your opportunity. 
your revenue, your cash, your leads, your customers, that's the key. Now, content is a vehicle. Content is a way of you to find the right audience so and to get, get exposed to the right audience. But it's not the only, I should say, when people think, well, I want to just create you know, tons of content and get it onto my website and get visible. Well, okay, that's fine. But if you're putting out the wrong content and not attracting the right audience, then it's absolutely fruitless. Content, when it's done well, will increase leads. It will build authority. It will give you potential retargeting, cross-pollinating with your paid media efforts. It will improve your conversion rates and it will definitely enable retention and reducing that churn. So the goal of any piece of content as a vehicle is to be on the best terms with search engines, including Google. And the idea is that when content is created, it is created with a clear purpose. So just creating content, spitting it out, spitting it out like a like a machine, is ultimately going to uh, not pay you good dividends. It's not going to be positive in the long term because you haven't employed the resources or the effort to understand what your buyer profile or your audience really cares about. And that's some of the questions we're going to answer today when we interview Mark, which I'm, he's going to be joining shortly. And we are going to be explaining some of the ways you can approach really identifying your buyer profile and being able to understand the audience. And that's going to allow you to say, okay, this is the content I'm going to. This is what people are going to care about. So when you think about what should I create, where do I start? Some of you are already creating content. You might have thought leadership pieces, blogs, articles, emails, whatever your content format is, you've probably got a YouTube channel, Instagram profile, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever, wherever you are at in any medium. There are really three parts to creating content. There is the keywords, that is the search terms, that's triggering how people find you. There are clusters, which is really the conversations that happen, like the topics out there. And then lastly, the topics, which are like sub parts of those clusters. So they're like generic groups inside those clusters. And that is a really good way of when you analyze content, that's really a good way to kind of start building this skeleton uh, system that will then slowly become your content strategy. And the goal is that it's always considering the more you know about your buyer profile, the more you know about your audience, the better you're going to inform your uh, content strategy. So step three for today is how to choose the right topics for your business and create content that drives traffic. So we are going to be joined uh, very, very shortly by Mark Mazer. And he is going to give us a really, a really good insight into content creation, building those topics, and uh, developing a content, uh, an SEO-led content strategy. So, with that being said, I'm going to stop sharing the screen. I'm going to add him, and then we're going to get back to the presentation. And he is going to be sharing some of his pearls of wisdom and knowledge. Okay. So, Mark, let me know when you can hear me. Hey, Jason. Hey, how are you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks for joining. Did you hear me okay? Was the, the audio okay? You said it was a bit loud at one point, right? Uh, yeah, when you pulled the mic away, it was uh, much better. So you, you sounded really good over there. Okay. Okay. Thanks, man. Thanks. So we are, um, so do you want to just give a brief introduction and then we'll uh, start working through the, the slides. Just tell, tell the audience a little bit about, uh, about what you do, uh, a little bit about your, uh, your background and then we'll get back into the slides. Yeah, excellent. Uh, so my name is uh, Mark Mazur and uh, I'm an Emmy award-winning filmmaker, writer and copywriter. Um, I've worked with a variety of brands. I ran a production company for seven years uh, and then since the, when the pandemic hit, I had to kind of uh, pivot a little bit and focus more on copywriting. So in my time, I've worked with brands like 3M, Target, I've written for Netflix. Uh, I've done a lot of work on Netflix's uh, YouTube channel and kind of optimizing those headlines. And a lot of the videos that I've worked on have garnered like, uh, tens of millions of views. Like some of them have just completely blown up. So that's been a lot of fun. Um, and so, so shifting my focus to copywriting, I've worked with a lot of uh, e-commerce brands, mid-sized organizations, helped uh, small people get started in diving into writing blogs and creating content and uh, writing tweets for IMAX. I've kind of done all a variety of all kinds of different work, um, but I really specialize in developing and, and writing content that uh, not only informs people, but also entertains. 
Awesome, awesome, man. So if anyone wants to uh, wants to connect with um, with uh, with Mark, you can connect with Mark. you can connect with him by just hitting this next. I'm going to give you guys uh, a QR. Can you see that, Mark? Yes. Yep. Right. So if anyone wants to connect with Mark, just uh, hit that Q that QR code, and it should bring up his website. So we've been we've been we've been talking for what like I think like a year and a half. Yeah, it's I was reflecting earlier today about how long we've been working together and uh, it, the time goes fast. <laughs> it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. And where are you where are you calling in from, uh, Mark? So calling in from uh, Los Angeles. So uh, yeah, currently mm -hmm. living out here uh, and doing a lot of copywriting stuff and then uh, also working and writing movies. So I have a couple movies set up that I'm developing and the copywriting stuff is uh, stuff that keeps me going during the day in between uh, waiting for people to read stuff really <laughs> awesome awesome man awesome i'm i'm so pleased you're here thank you very much for taking the time i know it's uh like 5 30 p.m or 6 p.m so i really appreciate you um you stepping in and and, uh, and giving the audience and again this is going to be shared after on youtube i'm going to share snippets on linkedin and uh, different formats so it's going to i really appreciate your 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 time and, and being able to join us here so absolutely Today, uh, the, the topic that we really want to ask you is, you know, how to choose the right topics for your business and create content that drives traffic. So this is really the um, the the uh, the, the question that you might say the incognito. So, Mark, where where do we start? Like, what's the what's the starting point for this? So, how do we get, go about starting to piece together the right topics? Yeah. So I think the the most important aspect of uh, of when you're developing content is really to put yourself into the mindset of somebody that is going to stumble across or come across your content and finding you know, what are what are they looking for? What are they, where are they in their journey? And uh, you're probably gonna come across a number of different answers and meet people at different parts of that journey. Uh, but imagining like who is your ideal person to come across your company, come across your blog, come across your Twitter a profile, whatever you're working on, and then start to answer some of these questions. You know, what are they are they looking for? Um, and then from there, we look at you know who are we specifically trying to influence? What are we trying to get them to do uh, aside from just reading our content? Um, and really like looking at that customer journey from when they first click on your link uh, on Google all the way to signing up for a newsletter or purchasing a trinket or or. Uh, signing up for a webinar, you know, what does that journey look like and diving into the different sections. So the first one is, is, you know, what, uh, is your, your buyer concerned about? What is that friction in your life that your blog is trying to answer? Um, so it's important to meet your customers where they are, discover their concerns and their frequent questions and where they are on their journey. And your potential customer is arriving from different parts. One person may be completely new to what your blog is about and somebody may be a seasoned vet and it's looking at different content that you can create along that journey for them and to kind of like onboard them onto that, that journey. So uh, it's important to find and develop content around these different areas. And then to discover that, you're gonna ask yourself, what are the questions that they're asking? Um, so we want to really discover what are they looking for and then try to answer that question for them. So you to, to do this, you're going to start with basic questions. So in this instance, we're going to start with, uh, I'm starting a succulent blog. I love succulents. We're going to dive in and we're going to make a blog about succulents. So we're going to start wide and we're going to look at what are the questions that you're going to have with succulents. And the first is, well, what makes a succulent different than a regular plant? And what is a succulent? And that could be a great blog about what is a succulent, what makes it special and different. And then you can dive into the different types of soils that succulents do well and the lighting that they need, maybe the humidity they need. Where do they best grow? Uh, I mean, in Southern California, we have a lot of sunlight. So there's specific types of plants that will do well here that may not do well in the Midwest. Um, so all of these can become individual pieces of content that you can put out on a blog and mm -hmm. Uh, you're, you're casting a wide net, but you're going deep into that specific subject. You're, you're living in the world of succulents and diving as deep as you can into that world, uh, but not letting yourself get distracted with uh, diving into 
other house plants or diving right. into uh, outdoor gardening. You want to stay specific to what you're trying to write about. Yeah. And then again, we're going to look at uh, who are we specifically trying to influence? You know, the content that uh, what is our, our customer looking for in their life? And that's where you can kind of start to figure out, you know, if uh, if you're starting a succulent company, you're starting a succulent blog, you may be looking at finding income from referrals. And this is where things, you know, that you can start to look at, like, well, is there a specific type of, of pot that people like? Or is this a great starter plant? And helping people figure out, like, what do you want someone to do with the content, the ideas that you have, and then branching out from there. And I apologize, my boss and terrier is whining next to me. He didn't get enough play today. So if you hear squeaking or see him popping up here, it's that's fine. what's going on. No, it's all good. So I, I think this is this is this is also so to like recap, you're know, like, what's your buyer persona concerned about? What types of questions or what are they concerned about? Like what they what would they usually usually ask? And really who specifically are we are we trying to to influence? That feel right. Like so very much focusing on building a a profile of your buyer and then uh, finding what are they looking for and then finding pieces of content to plug in along that buyer journey, whether they're a complete novice or an expert at something and trying to uh, a cast a net that can bring people in. And what you're going to find during this is you're going to discover specific questions that you're going to answer with your blog. And by finding those within yourself, these are questions that your audience undoubtedly has about the yeah. content that they're looking for. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, brilliant. I mean, when it, like, I think when, when it comes to like streamlining, you know, the content process, you talked about the start with topics and, you know, figuring out really what they're concerned about. Um, so when people, when, as a business, like when you're, when you're thinking about keywords, you know, you can start with topics. You don't need to start with keywords. You can start with topics like conversations. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you, if you agree with this, Mark, but often I, one of the things I do is group like product related conversations, service related conversations, depending on your business model, client facing conversations, uh, problems you solve, um, typical conversations your clients have when they're, uh, when they're not so happy about a situation or they're not so, they're talking about another vendor. So what is it they're concerned about? Like what, and this is a good yes. way to kind of start by yeah, building out those topics um, before you even get too entrenched in keywords. What I often try and do right. is Tell people, hey, don't don't worry too much about the keyword. Let's try and figure out the overarching topic, and the, so we can then start putting that and piecing that together, building a content cluster, and then going into the weeds and finding the uh, the keywords. Right. There's a. I mean, there's two approaches to creating, and there's an outside in and inside out. And outside in is like doing the, the SEO and keyword research in the beginning, and then trying to form content from that. But doing the inside out, you're going to have a more authentic answer to a lot of those questions. Uh, yeah. And you're going to find uh, your content is is going to uh, resonate with people more. And a great yeah. way to do this uh, is make like uh, one of those um, a web. Start with a web and find out all the different branches that you can possibly think of in the world of succulents. And you're going to start to branch out more and more and more in different topic ideas. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And um, often, like when um, when we uh, when we look at building these topics, what I often um, help doing as well is like batching them. So like you've got topics and you, you're like, okay, where are these in related to the buyer journey? For example, if it's applicable. Mm -hmm. So how aware are they of my brand? If this is a topic that I want to target and a conversation I want to be in, um, where are they in relation to my brand and my solution or my product or, or, or whatever you're, you're, you're interested in? The intent of the topic. So, do they, is the topic a buyer intent? Is it a solution intent? Is it a, is it a, just a statistic intent? Like, what, what is the intent of, of, of the topic? Like, where, what is the, what are they, where are they emotionally or when they're actually making those searches? Are they interested in finding something about it? And the last is how, how close is the topic? To your internal expertise like if you want to have a conversation and hold authority in a conversation you need to be an expert especially if you're trying to bring somebody closer to your your business and uh, get them closer to your revenue opportunity the more you can show your expertise earlier in the funnel the higher the higher the likelihood of your conversion rates being proportionately a lot higher so like it just mm -hmm. just compound proport like often see when really loose content attracts traffic the traffic is really bad when you've got really specific, very well curated content, the quality of the traffic, the time on site, the bounce rate, 
how many other pages they visit after reading the content is proportionately a lot higher. Yeah. So clusters will be refined before keyword research. So basically you can refine your clusters and then you can, uh, then you can approach, uh, you know, building out those content clusters, different topics and a good rule of thumb, which I often use is like, you can like, if you're building a content strategy, say for like 2023, you can like have maybe sit, you know, four to six content clusters and you could have a couple of topics or a couple of variations of that cluster. If you're coming away with maybe 12 or 24 pieces of content that you can create without getting too broad as what you spoke about right. before Mark is you want to be specific because if you're not specific and centered around your course service or product, you kind of get further and further away from your funnel. And, right. Uh, yeah. And when you were talking about, uh, using like chat GPT, I think one of the big things that we're going to see more with the internet with the creation of these tools is a lot of the signal versus the noise. And uh, people can absolutely sniff out when something is not authentic. And I think you're going to see more importance on thoughtfully created content and people will seek that out and care for it. And mm -hmm. the reality is that uh, search engines like Google or Bing are going to end up having to prioritize real content because that's what people will want to find. Of, co of course, yeah. And this is actually a really good segue because um, when people want to start creating like a, they, for example, if you've got a new business, which is generally not the case in um, in most businesses when they're starting out, if they're a startup and, you know, a mo like a modern business or like a business has been in the last five or 10 years, um, most of these businesses are aware that kind of content is pr you know, a primary way of bringing in traffic. So it's generally not the case, but when you're starting out and you're like trying to consider building a content strategy, I have this like um, analogy of an onion. So what fascinates you, me about an onion is that the onion is like a layer on a layer on a layer on a layer. And it, every layer looks pretty much the same, but compound, it grows out and it is, uh, you know, it's a, it, it's a big piece, right? So you might be the, right at the center of your onion, you can start by defining your topic and subject. So what do you want to build up your subject matter expert? expertise and you don't want to be an SME in every conversation in the room. Like you want to choose something that is concerned that your client is concerned about going back to what you said, Mark, about those three pointers, uh, what they're concerned about, what types of questions they have. And that is going to help you build your first initial topic and subject. That's going to start small. Then you can look at variations, long tail variations of your topic, long tail variations of your subject. Then you can even go further and talk about statistics related to your your area of expertise. You can look at comparisons. You can build supporting evidence, supporting content, and then finally you can break out and start to overlap. I've seen businesses, for example, be very very successful in a specific field, for example, a technology, and then they start to add on a completely different, say, like a different service, like something that's not related to technology, um, and it really struggled to rank. Why is that? And I get asked this question a lot. And the reason is, Mark, is that people don't understand that Google classifies domains and not just Google, other search engines classify websites according to the conversation they're having. Mm -hmm. So if you are talking about lots of different things, then it's hard for a search engine to prioritize you outside of all the other ranking factors because you're so broad. So when you go broad, make it like the last evolution of your strategy, like your right. long term plan. And uh, let's talk a little bit now about keyword research. Uh, so as, as you said, Mark, you said, what was it? You said inside out and outside in. How did, can you just repeat what you said? I thought that was really cool. Yeah, so I, uh, I was talking about when creating content, um, you don't want to start outside in. You don't want to start doing keyword research too early and trying to use those keywords to, you know, uh, back into content. You want to start figuring out what are the ideas that you want to use. And then at that point, look into keywords and find out like what points are you already hitting that you didn't even realize it by doing your keyword research. Yeah. Yeah. And interesting, like this, this slide specifically about streamlining the content process, your, your SEO led content process, really you want to confirm your findings with research. So like, when you do employ the keyword, like once you've done your approach, so if you've started with topics, then gone to keywords or started with keywords, then gone to topics and content classes, 
either way, you will want to, there'll be a point where you want to validate that the keyword metric makes sense. And right. with that being said, we're going to choose the example of your succulent, uh, succulent <laughs> garden or succulents. Um, and I did some analysis. So succulent garden, um, it has like 8,100 searches a month in the US. So global volume is, you know, nearly 15,000. Um, we've got a 56% difficult ratio. Uh, we have lots of keyword variations. This is a pretty good proportion of keyword variations to the volume. Um, don't generally see that. Uh, it's a pretty, that's a very good metric. This is why I chose this keyword out of the succulent was obviously a very broad keyword, right? Mark, like, yeah. I mean, um, it had heaps of volume. It had like half a million searches. For me. So I choose, I chose succulent garden because I found the, the keyword variation. So. Um, and then you've got lots of questions. So this is going to help you build your frequently asked questions within the article. And it's got a, like a, it's, it's, it's a competitive keyword because it has a, has a, like a hundred percent. That means people are bidding on this keyword the whole time. Now, how do these metrics help me as uh, a content creator or somebody commissioning the content I'm in the marketing team, I'm, I'm helping put together the content strategy. Yeah. Well, when you're analyzing these keywords, guys, what you want to look at is, do they make sense to my business? Do they make sense for my buyer profile? And do they make sense in, for the internal expertise I have? Is what I was saying at the beginning about kind of, when you have an SEO led content strategy, you're uniting these different moving parts. And you've got your overarching uh, aspect, like your your culture. Does this make sense? Does the, does the business want this content out there? Does it, uh, whatever, your, whatever your goals are with your SEO strategy, if you're just writing a blog, that, you know about about baking I, I have a friend who has a sourdough uh, baking website and he has you know lots of traffic his only interest is to get people to go to amazon and buy affiliate products right um it really depends uh but the point is is whatever your goals are they this they have to make sense with these metrics and what this means right. is that you don't just want to trust the metrics blindly when it doesn't make sense to your business even if you have low volume on a keyword it doesn't mean it's bad. It just means there's less volume, but maybe that volume is really high intent for your buyer, uh, your buyer journey. So consider that when you're narrowing down your keyword research. And, and I think like that's a, a great example of um, how you can take an idea of something you want to write and then use a keyword SEO research to help hone that idea. Because if I was looking at it, writing a title, of uh, how I discovered the joy of succulents and you as an SEO expert and we were collaborating came back to me and was like hey just so you know the like the succulent keyword there's a lot of competition on there but succulent garden has a lot more opportunity I can tweak that headline and yeah. now it's how I found how I discovered the joy of creating a succulent garden and we exactly. might get a better traction on that yeah exactly that's why having the culture like in place in the business is so important because yep. if they're just like disjointed operations, you could go ahead and invest a lot of resources into that article and it not ever be found by anybody. Right. And so yeah, hundred percent that feedback, that culture is absolutely, absolutely key. So guys, now we're going to actually look at building a perfect brief. Now I know we are running, like we're nearly at, at six minutes too. So I'm going to try and get through this, um, to try and get through this. But again, I'm Mark, we're, I, I love the fact that we've got your, you're here on the call. So I'm gonna hand this back over to you and uh, talk a little bit about uh, building that brief, imagining yourself as the content creator or creating a brief for another content creator. So again, I, I think uh, if I was approached and uh, somebody said, we are, we are, we're stuck in a company and we wanna start developing our blog, can you help us create content? So again, I would start with, you know, what are the ideas and what are the headlines that I want to dive into? And I would start intentionally with the bad ones first. Like I would start with a list and just start listing out as many terrible succulent headlines as you possibly can, because it's yeah, by getting through all of those ideas and all those bad ideas is when you're going to start to find stuff that isn't as bad and maybe stuff that you like a little bit. Uh, but it's important that you work through all of those headlines to find stuff that you, that you start to like and stuff that isn't uh a, a cliche um and then this is a great opportunity to get with your seo person and start saying like i want to this is kind of the general topics that i'm looking at that i like and i want to write a headline and i want to blog about how i discovered the joy of something 
And that works in a couple of ways because one, we're working on some of those headless keywords, so that's your keywords, and Jason would come back and say, succulents is pretty heavy. Is it possible we could do succulent gardens? And that's a great way that I can tweak that headline. And what I really love about that headline of how I discovered the joy of creating a succulent garden is it opens a loop. What I mean by a loop is that it, it opens a question that the audience and your reader is going to find the answer inside the content. And they're going to have to open up that blog and start going in. And there's a natural human desire that we all have to close loops, to find answers to questions. And that answer will come, but we can tap into that uh, evolutionary trait to find answers and use that to get people to open up. Yeah. So now when you dig into big organizations, that's where you're going to start putting together a brief and you're going to, there's going to be a lot more stakeholders involved that are going to want to know what exactly we're going to be working on. Yeah. Um, and that's where Jason and I and the organization we work with are a little bit bigger. So we will put together project briefs for the different stuff that we're going to be working on and the content that we want to develop. And Jason and I will collaborate on these briefs to do the SRE research, to get the headline ideas, kind of what is going to be in this blog uh, before the stakeholders will like give a thumbs up and we invest more time in actually creating the content. No, that's, that's great. So what, what this really means is, um, so when we, we, we look at this, we've got like, you know, we review an SEO led article brief framework where we fill out the outline, we get the buy-in from the subject matter expert, whoever is the voice or the actual, it could even be the writer, it could be somebody that turned in the business, CEO, it could be the CTO, it could be anybody, it could just be somebody, a sales rep or you know, an account executive. Um, we're looking at resources, we're trying to build as many resources as possible um, to be able to have an understanding of the landscape because we imagine when you create content, it's like sending a player out into the field. Now, when a good coach sends a player out into the field, the first thing that he does is he will analyze who the player is going to play with because it makes it makes doesn't make any sense to send a player that's not going to be able to compete or going to struggle to compete with the people around him or if he excels he might lack back so the important part is to get resources collect do that landscape research so you know like what's out there look for those keyword opportunities and then you can start working towards a timeline which is really when you come to the part of the uh, of the project to publish now Mark, this is our uh, content brief, right? Um, uh, the one that we, we, we're going to give this away, guys, after the uh, webinar, I'm going to send an email um, and I'm going to be giving this away. This is like a, like a true SEO content brief. Um, you can use it for articles, for long form, short form, um, for lots of different aspects. Maybe, uh, uh, Mark, do you want to just briefly touch on the, the content brief to kind of explain what it entails? Yeah, so this is really a, a document that we'll use uh, when presenting our brief and ideas to higher ups or stakeholders uh, and try to get as much information um, that we possibly can before we actually pursue main the content. And, you know, for a lot of the, the companies that Jason and I work for, uh, we may not be the subject matter ex experts. I may not be the one that knows about succulents. Uh, but I'm going to work and I'm going to write and collaborate with those people. So this is another document that we can use to get buy-in from them as well. Um, so that, you know, if there are four or five people that will be working on this, everybody understands the direction that we're going and it's a, it's a unified effort. So this is an attempt to make sure everybody gets on the same page and that we all agree, like, this is something we want to pursue and work on together before we invest more like man hours and resources. So That's parts of this, uh, is, is the title is obviously really important. Um, and this is a great example of if I was working on this content brief for this succulent blog, I would have written out how I discovered the joy of succulents. And Jason would have done his SEO research and then came back and suggested a new title. And the reality is that Jason probably would have come back and, and thrown like three or four title suggestions and we would have had a, a conversation about which one would work best. Um, so then after that, it, it would be a, a summary of of what is going to be in this, like what are the sections that we want to include? Um, another great example is putting in like the, the H ones that'll be in the article as well. Um, and that'll be used later on, uh, because those are like, are, are the, is, is the most important content that we have, um, or is the H ones because a lot of people will just skim and find the sections that they want. A lot of people don't read the full articles. I don't read the full articles. A lot of times so people will look for what they're searching for in something specific. So, 
Uh, great title and great H1s are, are a real big priority for us. Yeah, this is the, um, this is guys, this is the full brief. I'm going to give you this blueprint um, after. Um, but yeah, it's got pretty much everything. Can I, um, this is really interesting. What Mark was saying is that the, the, the really the goal, that's what I was saying at the beginning of uniting like the culture and the the data and, and, and being able to get the best of everything is so important because if there isn't any buy-in, then they're not going to collaborate. They're not going to be, there's no one's going to find time to invest into to making this right. If you're going to have a conversation with a prospect customer, the quality of that first conversation is probably going to determine the conversion rate. So if you put that to your front facing content strategy, that is why having this approach is going to make sure that the content on the front end is a hundred percent uncompromised. And it is, is focused on driving authority building your credibility and bring, taking them a step closer in the funnel. And that is interesting because in here, Mark, we actually have like objectives. What stage of awareness are they at? We filled out this one, yeah. guys, for the uh, succulent blog, the one that we were talking about. But like, what solution is the content purpose for? If there's a solution, this could be a product, this could be whatever your business, if you have something that you want them, that you want the content to be purposeful, you can add in a comment here. What stage of the funnel is the reader at, etc. So the goal of this would be that we take them closer down the funnel. Is that correct, Mark? They're like the next step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the goal of this is to really uh, help you answer the questions that you didn't even know you need to ask about the content yeah. you're going to create. And really uh, think about holistic content from all the different angles that you, that you should consider and even some that you, that you shouldn't, you know? Um, so... Yeah. It, it's a great way, and, and and sometimes not all the uh, all the questions are applicable to what you're working on, uh, mm -hmm. but more often than not, uh, it'll get your brain going and, and really help you later on uh, down the road. Yeah. You know, the, the last thing you want is to write an entire blog and then try to back your way into a brief like this and realize that you did not hit a lot of points that should have been hit. exactly. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Okay, so guys, I'll be sharing that article blueprint. So the, the brief blueprints, you guys have that um, as a takeaway. And then just, this is just like five points that when it comes to building those SEO led content briefs, um, there are five things that you just must have. Like you can leave everything, but these are like five things I always, always re like recommend people to not forget. One is identify the schema of the content. So where is the content going to be placed on your website or whatever the platform you're going to be using? What's the schema? So how is it going to be indexed? How is it going to be found? What's the format of the content? identify that very early on because that's going to help you then evolve and move from that like move out from that 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 point properly format your content people don't use this i still i see lots of content on the internet today fresh content that isn't formatted correctly h1s h2s h3s h4s text titles it's very important that you format your content keywords are indexed and the first thing they see is the tags and that is your titles and your headings so format them correctly. Break up your content so it's completely readable and digestible. Uh, create short but query-friendly URLs. URLs, the longer they are, and this is a bit of a, a, a like a, a, a hack, and I, to be honest, this is the only SEO hack I know, is that the shorter the <laughs> URL, actually the better they have in regards to being crawled. I don't know why, and I don't think anybody really has any any uh, reply exactly why that is, but I found from experience and years of experience, longer URLs do a lot less than the shorter ones. And I guess it's something to do with Google's crawler system or whatever. And lastly is include your frequently asked questions. These can often serve as like long tail keyword opportunities. So I think that's pretty much it in regards to our brief and, you know, creating the content. And I often say that, you know, create content that communicates, not just optimize for search engines. I mean, we've talked a lot today and I've been very, very like specific, you know, don't just create content, you know, content purpose, you know, create something that is visible, is optimized, but most importantly, that it communicates something that is valuable. If it doesn't communicate value, then we, we, we have a, we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> and lastly, if you guys are interested in any uh, content creation, you can talk to Mark. I will put his email in, the, in the, uh, his website and his email address in the next um, uh, the email, the follow-up from the webinar. And if you are interested in any SEO uh, coaching 
or consultancy, you can book a free SEO discovery call with me. Just go to my website, fill out the application and um, we can book a free uh, free session. And with that being said, guys, thank you very much for everyone who has joined today. Thank you, Mark. Uh, thank you for, 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 for taking the time and uh, sitting on this and giving us your, yeah. your wisdom. And now is the time to ask us questions. So I'm going to open up the chat and let's see if we have any interesting questions other than chat GPT. <laughs> yeah. okay, right. um, one second, guys, I'm just enabling the chat. So here goes the chat panel. And I have a couple of chats from before. So if anyone is still in here, yes, we have people. That's great. So I'm going to have answer a few questions by some of the people. If anyone has a question, please add it into the chat. Um, no. Okay. So first question, do you want to read these questions, Mark? I, my chat is not updating, so I can't see it. Yeah, no worries. Just at the end of the, oh. uh, the yeah. I, I just came in. Yeah. Um, thoughts on best keyword research tools by a good Jason question. <laughs> uh, well, it really depends on your, on how much you will use the application. So if you want a free tool, I'd probably, I'd probably use like Google alerts or Google, um, try to find, use the Google database. Um, you can actually set up alerts on Google and look at like trends on Google, which is totally free. So for example, you can go to Google alerts and set up an alert. So every time somebody publishes or content is indexed on the internet with a certain search term, it will give you, uh, it will send you a weekly or a daily email, the cadence you set up. There's also Google trends. So you can actually look at trends. It doesn't give you any volume of, of data, uh, like keyword volume or data, but it does give you a good idea if something is trending. Now there is one more free tool that I really like, and it is called keyword surfer. Um, so you can basically, uh, I'm just going to plug it in here today. So keyword surfer is a free tool. Um, and it basically allows, it's like an extension to your, to your Chrome and it plugs in and it gives you suggestions. So like you add it to your Chrome extension and I've just ping the, uh, I'll ping the, um, so here it is. Here's the extension. I'm going to put it in the chat. So that is a really good tool for finding free keywords. So when you do a search, it gives you on the right hand side of your search results, all of the keyword variables and the volume. Now, if you're going to do more SEO work, I'd probably go with SEMrush. I find SEMrush the most accurate. And probably after that, I'd go with, with Moz. But again, there's any price tag and just depends if you're not going to use the rest of the application, I don't see any point spending, you know, a hundred or $150 a month. If you're not going to be actively using the the the, uh, the application, um, I've heard of Surfer before. Is the paid version worthwhile, or best just get so much? No, I mean I actually use the free version of of keyword SEO Surfer. So don't, don't go pay for it. I don't know. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> um, SEMrush, yeah, I, I mean, SEMrush is very powerful. I actually use their API a lot to track like backlinks and do uh, different crawling and, and, and auditing. But when it comes to like just doing keyword research, I think it's too much of a heavy lift or too expensive personally. Um, I've got another question here on the slides from before. Um, Mark, should I use ChatGPT for my content? <laughs> <laughs> So short answers, short I, answers. I, short, okay. Here's what I'll say. I think there's great use opportunities for chat GPT and I have used it specifically for brainstorming and helping me develop ideas and things. Cause it will do a great job of giving you things that you don't know anything about. So I've actually used it as a great search engine. Uh, but you have to be careful because double check the information. Cause there has been a lot of complaints that it, it just spits out lies. Um, but I think if you are diving into something and you want to like, in this case, open up chat GPT and say, uh, what are some interesting topic ideas for a blog about succulents? It'll spit out a lot of like decent ideas that you should definitely use. I would not use it to write full content. Uh, and I, <laughs> strange enough, I had an incident with a client of mine who I wrote, uh, some Facebook ads for, and they decided that they were happy with chat GPT's Facebook ads and put those up instead of mine. 
and a week later came back and said that they were the worst performing ads and they need to be shut off immediately because they were so terrible and not in it all the voice of the brand. So that was very like reassuring for me. Um, but I think ChatGPT can be used in a smart, intelligent way, but I would not, yeah. um, I would not write articles with that completely. No, no, definitely. And the last thing I was going to say about that in supporting it is that when I also talk with people who are using it or have used it and, and, uh, yeah, the investigation and research I've done around it is that all of these things are, are good and uh, they're all supportive. But if you don't use your intent and your intellect and your emotional understanding of where your buyer profile and your audience is at, you, you the, the application is only going to be as good as the as the data that you give it. And um, I know there are some possibilities of it in the future, self learning in real time. I don't know if that is current something like there's existing application softwares for that i don't think so but i really think that they're, they're only as good as the as the input that you give them so i yes. think the potential an assistant maybe yes um do i think you can spit out content and have it rank no i honestly don't or i think you might be able to for some time but it'll only be so long until uh, search engines find those trademark or, like they're going to be right. watermarked with that content 100 percent they wouldn't, I don't think there'll be, uh, there'll be uh, any space for Google's in Google's interest, right? And, and I think it's important to remember how ChatGPT generates content. And, and really what it's doing is uh, taking its best guess as to what the next word should be when creating something. So really you're just making something that's incredibly derivative of everything else that's been made in that area. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, you're, you're really just creating noise and not signal. Yeah. Okay, we've got one more question here. Um, how do you feel about posting frequency? Uh, is weekly okay if our content is good? Um, I will start with that. And the, uh, the first is, I think it's a really good question. One of the things I found from experience is to always post on the, once you find a day that you're comfortable posting on, that you have the time and you can actually get it out, stick to that day. Like. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've found that, for example, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays on some businesses work really well, whereas the weekend for my, one of my personal websites works way better than the week. So it really depends um, about the volume of that you want to post. If the content is good and you feel that it is, uh, you're transferring your, your what we talked about today, uh, the knowledge and your expertise, then um, one a week is, is fabulous. Um, I don't think there is a the volume game here is like, or if I do 10 a week, I'm going to get 10x results. No, because most likely that the 10 isn't going to be as quality as that that one or two that you are doing consistently. I always recommend, uh, you know, choose quality before quantity, um, but make sure that you can stay consistent with it. Because if you're taking two months to write a piece of content and when it gets out there, it doesn't mean any, anything of value to your buyer profile, then it isn't, there's no point anyway. So you have to have that happy medium one piece of content or two pieces of content, three pieces of content a week is great, but keep it consistent. That's the goal here is be right. consistent because that's how repetition you will gain the, 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 the you'll gain the, um, the benefit of doing this on the same day and it will help your indexing and scaling your content visibility. Yes. And make sure it's good. Don't just put it out because you need deadlines to be hit. Make sure it's it's good. Wait till next week. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Yeah. Um, um, what have you got here? Okay, this one's for you, Mark. Um, are we better to write content ourselves as the founder and SME or outsource to the content writer? How to figure out what strategy is best? Use the brief. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, that's a, a great question. And as somebody who is a freelance writer, I think I'm probably a little biased, but I'll do my best to give the, the, the fairest answer. Um, I always find that people that specialize in what they do is going to give you the best content. And, you know, I work for a company that is highly technical in the cybersecurity space, and I am not, but I work with their SMEs to create content that fits perfectly with their brand. Um, and that what that means is that I sit down and have conversations with them and I go back and forth with the SME. But what I'm able to do then is craft a story uh, and actually form an article that flows really well and a lot of the issues that that a lot of these smes have in this industry is that they're they're so technical focused that they get lost in the weeds of the technicality and lose the bigger picture 
uh, and are unable to speak to uh, their you know, potential customer because they are so zeroed in on, on things that really uh, shouldn't be in a piece of content like this. So that's where somebody like myself is able to come in with a, a broader knowledge of how to craft an article that people want to read and get through. Um, and then like through research and, and plugging in tech, the, the technical stuff from an SME, I'm able to craft something that is a really nice synthesis between uh, the technical knowledge and a general like entertaining piece of content to read and get through. Yeah. Um, so it really, I would say it depends on your writing background. If you have a really strong writer and uh, you get good results with your content, you should absolutely write yourself. But also keep in mind, your time may be more valuable elsewhere. And that's where hiring somebody who specializes in that. While you can focus on building your business, that might be more uh, a better use of your time and, and resources as well. I think that's good. Yeah, you got to like you got to have a balance between getting in the weeds versus you know doing it. Uh, sub, you know, finding somebody that you can trust for the process. But again, you really want to have that SOP that that you want to have that brief. You want to make sure that you go to your content writer with a brief, with that brief, or some type of brief, so there is a clear structure and paper trail as to like right. what the content is going to be, who is it for, how is it going to engage them, where do we want them to be, what are the keywords, what are the titles. That is going to make sure that whatever you do anyway, if you are the founder of an SME in the business, which is generally the case, um, you now know that your trust is one thing, but knowing that you've done the transfer of expertise is another. And you've basically enabled the writer to, on your behalf, create something beautiful that makes that makes sense from business strategy and from also the, the, the facility of the writer being able to sorry, facilitate content creation efficiently right and so you're not like as the right. you know as the, the business owner kind of creating the content and, and and trying to play that game and at the same time trying to run your business um i don't know from personally what i do is i use the brief i get the brief to the content creator when the content creator comes back he actually comes back with suggestion bullet points under the titles and then they move forward to a draft once i've reviewed that i review the draft and then we go to publishing but it all starts with having that subject and that brief. Uh, so, yeah, I think that is everything. Oh, one more question uh, for you, Mark, is how long should my content be and to be considered authoritative? Um, that's a great question. It all, it all depends on uh, what it is. I would say generally, um, I would like one and a half to two pages is kind of, what I feel like is, is a good like amount. Um, words, yeah. yeah, I would say, I would say 750 to, you know, 900,000 words is great. Um, cause you also have to, you know, we live in a time that TikTok is king and people will swipe away very quickly. And I think there is a certain, uh, intimidation with really long articles, uh, that people won't even dive in if they realize it's a pretty big time commitment. Yeah. So it's really about finding that right balance of you want to get your points across. Uh, mm -hmm. and making sure that your H ones are really like hit the point, because like I said, people will often just scrub through the article until they get to a section they want to read. So really nail those H ones, be succinct and, uh, also be respectful of your reader's time. Um, but you also want to make sure the content is valuable and it's, it's more than just a tweet, um, so that people will, will, will want to engage in, and also, uh, view you as an authority on this subject. Awesome. Okay, guys. So uh, this has been really, really fabulous. I think we've come to the end of the session. It is, it's we're a few minutes past the uh, the 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 allotted time. So thank you, everyone that joined. Um, and I know there was some really good takeaways here for for everyone. And I will be following up with the presentation PDF, and the replay, and the brief. So stay tuned for the email tomorrow morning. And um, yeah, I really really enjoyed it. Thanks, Mark, for your time. Honestly, man. Appreciate yeah, thanks it. for having me, Jason. Appreciate it. And thank you everybody for joining. Awesome. Thanks everyone. Have a have a good evening. Bye-bye. Take care.